Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a first look, a sneak peek, at an upcoming game called Terra Incognito Antarctica 1911. This is a game that's being developed by Every Single Soldier, the same developer behind Afghanistan 11, Vietnam 65, Her Ma or His Majesty's Ship, and, um, or was it Her Majesty's Ship, and um, uh, Carrier Deck. Uh, this game is not released yet. It is coming out on the 19th of March, so this is a sneak peek. Uh, it's coming out on Steam, and um, I'm playing currently version 0.91, so I would imagine there will probably be a, a further version with additional bug fixes and other things like that coming out. Now, this is a game about attempting to reach the South Pole. Uh, it appears to be that you can only play as the British, but this is about a historical race to the South Pole, uh, by two expeditions that occurred in 1911. There was a British expedition and there was a Norwegian expedition. And it was sort of a race of the first uh, to the South Pole. Uh, thank you, His Majesty ship. Um, so a race to the South Pole, uh, which, which uh, occurs over multiple legs. So this game is sort of played over different, I guess, legs, if you will, of the of the race there. So you start off at kind of a base camp. You then have to proceed, uh, ideally, a certain distance before you set up your first base camp. Uh, and then you continue to set up, like, depots and base camps on your way to the South Pole. Um, I'll go ahead and just jump in. I did play through the tutorial. It was a little bit slow. Um, but I did, I think, do a fairly good job of kind of explaining some of the basics. We'll see if I remember any of the basics as we play through this now. Johan Nagel, the designer and programmer of uh, Every Single Soldier. Base. Okay. Uh, I actually had a chance to interview him with... Um, one of the uh, one of his other games before for single mode strategy. So this is where the game starts. I don't know how to. Can I swing my mouse around? Let's take a look. See. Oh, whoops! All right, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so we are back at the base camp. This is where the game starts. You can see it's McMurdo. It's the British base camp. It is currently day zero, hour 17 of the expedition. We've got our ship off here on the right. We've got our base camp here. It's kind of a, a wooden structure. You can see it's got a fire going. It's it's very, uh, it's much better situated to sort of resist the harsh weather of the South Pole. Um, you can see there are two individuals, both of which have sort of sleds chained to their back. Later in the game, you do have the option, I believe, of having sled dogs that help carry your stuff. But I think in the first two legs of the game, it has to be you and your sort of colleague. Uh, the game sort of gives you a diary entry where it's like, the, the, the dogs are still getting used to the, the climate, so they're not ready yet. Now, this is a game that occurs over a race. Uh, I believe we have to get to this destination on the far end of the map uh, in order to get off this, this map and, and move forward. I don't think this is the South Pole itself. I think this is just the end of the first leg. Um, you can see here the time kind of steadily ticks off on the right. The weather forecast is in the top right the next three days. Um, you get information about your characters here on the bottom. Uh, you click on either one of these to select either one of your characters. Um, so you've got Explorer number one, the Butcher. You've got Explorer number two, the Scotch Drinker. You have a temperature read to the right and to the sorry to the left and to the right of each character that tells you their current temperature if they get all the way to the bottom the character freezes to death and dies and you lose if you're back at your base camp it refreshes your heat if you go to a depot you can actually set up a lamp to kind of give you a little bit of extra heat to sort of refresh but this is sort of your your health meter if you will you apparently have three bullet icons for each of these characters which I think represents the ability to sort of shoot at animals that are coming at you. I'm not sure there is... I think it's the E button, but it's not doing anything for me when I do that. Um, and I think that's sort of the, the real quick overview uh, before we actually start the race. Now, I'm already three days behind, so I'm actually going to go ahead and... Ab or uh, I'll go ahead and abort, and then we'll go and jump right back in. Um, so let's go ahead and... By the way, settings, does it... Oh, I can turn Norway on or off. So we can turn off the competition and just make it a challenge to get there. There also is apparently a polar bear which can attack you. You can turn that on or off. That's what your gun is, is used for, is to fight off the polar bear. Assuming it's the, the E key. I can't remember what the tutorial said now, but I believe it's E. 
Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump back in and restart. I think that was a good overview, right, but we'll see. Down. England expects every single soldier to do his duty. Back at base. Back at base. Okay, so both our characters back at base. We can go ahead and click on this little house icon up here to select the base. And then we can go ahead down here and we can load our sled up with stuff. So there's a weight limit here that represents how much we can carry in our sled. Uh, and then um, you can, you know, you, you can only carry so much. The first section here is food. So obviously we want to carry some food to make sure that we can actually, you know, survive. The second is oil, which is important for when we set up our, our camp. We're going to need oil to keep a fire and a furnace going. So we'll load up with 20, fo 20 food, 10 oil. Um, this third section here, I can't remember what that is. Oh, that's blankets. So obviously we want to make sure that our character has, has a blanket. And then the, the final option here is a ladder, which can be used to sort of bridge uh, large gaps, if you will, in the ice. And so you could load with that, um, but you can see it, we just got a warning here that uh, we're taking a bit of strain, which means that our character is going to be a little bit overloaded if we put a ladder on there. Um, so what we could do is we could have a little bit less oil. Maybe we'd only say have five, uh, seven oil. And then we can put this on here. As long as we stay below three, I believe, we don't take a strain. Although we do move slower than, than otherwise. So we'll go ahead and close that. You can see our, our sled is loaded up now. Um, now we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to click on the second explorer here. Toasty. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to load up his sled as well. We'll do 20 food. We'll do seven oil. We'll do one blanket and one uh, ladder. And so Blanket both base. of these guys are ready to move forward here. So we're actually going to go forward with the first character here. And we're going to set out from base. You can see there's a flag here. Um, we're still considered at home base. But now that home base icon left. And you can see our temperature is beginning to drop. You can see here that we're moving across the ice toward this part of the map. The edge of the map that is our objective here. We've got a little red tool tip down, or a little red icon down here that represents our character. Um, there's sort of a dog icon down here that's for when you have uh, your sled dogs actually helping you do stuff. It's kind of hard to see. It looks like that's the... edge of where we can go. So I can click on this icon. I get a couple different options. I can have a flag, a tent, point flag, place ladder, proceed to main base, or build a tent camp. I'm getting a little bit cold here, a little bit chilly. You can see the uh, characters icing over too. I might get myself killed here. Alright, I guess I can uh, build a tent. Hopefully I build it before I die. Going to need some resupply. Oh no, I died! <laughs> that was fast. Okay, I guess you can't do that. Well, that was freaking fast. Mush. Oh, there we go. You just click on the dog button up there. Yeah, doggies! Let's go, doggo! Time to get going. Forwards! My dogs are gonna die because I just... I'm gonna press them too hard. Oh no, they're too tired. Please don't die, doggies. Okay, good. So as we burn the fuel, we can see the dogs get get better. As we do that, we've already set this guy. Let's set this guy off to get to the other tent so I can click on this and say proceed to the next tent. You can see the tent off on the horizon. I do like some of the way the graphics and things here are represented. But he kind of just goes on his own, so he's all toasty over here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. There's a bear. I don't want an expedition. What are you doing? 
You just shot the completely wrong Ooh. direction. Top Buddy, stop. <laughs> ah! Shoot it! Shoot it! Okay, this bear seems like he's... Why can't I pivot? There's no way to actually aim. Well, at least we... Getting damn cold. Getting damn cold. Okay, dude, you need to get to the camp. Both of you are apparently are freezing. Oh, it's too close. Reach that tent. Going to need some resupply. Oh, oh shit. No, you didn't make it! Okay, well, because I had some challenges with playing through the regular game, and it is a pre-release version of the game, I think the tutorial does a better job of explaining how to play than I can. I, th I thought it would be pretty cl quick and easy to talk through the stuff, but the tutorial is a much more sort of crafted experience, so we'll go with this. You can see it pops up with some text, tells you about the Explorer training, so this is... Uh, the training camp, you know, we're trying to reach the South Pole before the Norwegians. Um, at every stage of the journey, the pole involved finding a path to and reaching the objective in the shortest possible time. All stage maps are randomly generated and are completely unique. Uh, the ice pack is revealed when the explorer gets within visible range. The worse the weather, the shorter the detection range. The ice pack will be less dense and the weather will deteriorate with every successive stage. Is that accurate for going to the South Pole? Like, by the time you're down there, aren't you pretty much on a solid sheet of ice? Um, your team consists of two explorers, an English and a Scotsman. The explorers are selected by left-clicking on the portraits and the goggles, as I explained earlier. So we can select the second explorer here. It uses a WASD key um, for movement. Uh, Q is the key I was looking for. It deploys the telescope, and E fires the rifle. Um, move the first explorer to Top the, the small point flag, which is up here. Um, okay, so it explains the body temperature thing on the lower left. As this goes down, right, then you Something die, which I kind of explained previously. Alright, so we got to the point. I don't really know what that means, other than there's always like a point like right before your base camp. Um, we're back here and it's explaining there's four different types of food or fuel or other things like that. Food, fuel, tent, ladder. Click on the icon here. We can load 20 crates of food. We can load a ladder. And we can click close. Now it wants me to click on the second explorer. And load 15 food and one ladder into the second explorer's thing. We'll go ahead and move the second explorer to the point flag. And again, the more you have waited on your character, the um, more the slower you move. By the way, apparently the point flag moved when I got to the point. It just automatically moved out here. That's interesting. Okay, so explorers automatically detect ice packs within their very close proximity to themselves. They can also use the telescope to display to detect ice packs further away using the Q key. Um, and then the mini-map on the bottom right shows your current location. So we can go ahead and hit the Q key. We'll deploy the telescope. And then we can see a little bit further ahead of us that there's an ice pack out this way. We can move here, and you can see we have reached the flag. And click this, this button up here is the command button. And then you get options, as we kind of showed in our first pathetic attempt to play through here. So we can deploy a ladder aye, aye. to get over the corner of the ice pack. That should do it. The ladder allows us to cross. Cross the flag and plant, or cross the ladder and plant a flag. So we'll go ahead and plant a flag. At the point. And then we go ahead and return the second explorer to the main base. So we can actually do this. We just click this button, return to the main base. And then the character will go ahead and we'll do that on his own. So we'll just wait back here at the main base as the other explorer works back. You can see he's coming back this way on his own. You can see his health is getting low, but he'll get there in time. 
and when he gets back to base, he'll automatically heal up. Explorers can set up tents to use to store supplies and route to the objective, so we can do that. We'll go ahead and actually load some fuel oil as well. Back in base. Load tent under the first... Oh, that's a tent. That's not a blanket, it's a tent. Huh. Okay. Offload the ladder. So apparently we don't need the ladder. Back at base. No, and then for this other character, we probably should load some extra food. I'm kind of going a little bit off script. Bucket base. Alright, so oh, this guy, oh, oh. we're going to go ahead and move to the point flag, which is Bucket another base. command we can give. So proceed Let's to the point to flag. The and then while that, that guy's doing that, we can go ahead and move this point guy going. as well. Time to get going. Shove it off. Plant a British flag is the objective. Very British indeed. So I'm controlling the second guy. The first guy is just kind of going on his own. Need some tea. Need some tea. At the point. All right. So first character, Top we'll go ahead and set up a supply camp. Roger. While that guy's doing feeling that. Chipper. You're feeling chipper. Well, that's good news. Okay. At the point. Good stuff. So while he's building the camp, Great we'll go ahead and tent. let's take a look. Feeling first good. explorer back to the main camp. Well, I would like to at least give the camp some fuel oil or something. Carry on. Hopefully you Got can make it before ahead. you die. Let's get cracking. All right, so. Going to need some resupply. Oh, this. So you just automatically consume food, but you don't automatically consume heat by the looks of it. Back at base. All right, so the first Top character is back world. at base. It wants me to load five fuel. Oh no, the other guy wants me to load five fuel. Back at base. Affirmative. Nice and toasty. Okay, right so time. I did the five Time's fuel into the supply tent. Didn't I do that? Unload five fuel into the supply tent. Pretty sure I did. Pizza. Look, we got there. You're telling me there's nowhere to go from here? What was the point of this? At the point. At the tent. Feeling good. I did unload five fuel into the... Unless it wants me to just have it be exactly five fuel. I don't know, guys. This It doesn't feel like this is super ready for prime time yet. The game comes out in a couple of days. Time for some heat. I'm, I'm legitimately giving it my go. I unload Going five fuel in the supply tent. Point. I know I broke some of the rules, but, like, there's five fuel there. It shouldn't... Get a little frosty. Oh, this. Get a little frosty. Why is... Oh. Okay. So now I apparently I needed to do it just from the second explorer. Now I've gone ahead and activated the heater. We'll go ahead and send the second explorer back to the main base. Okay. Right. We got there, boss. Top of the world. Shove it off. Let's get cracking. Apparently this guy's hungry. So I don't know why the game would have had me go here. There doesn't appear to be any pathway. An evil polar bear. Yes, okay. 
so that, that's the tutorial. The race to the South Pole is back on. Um, base, Britannia. Okay, let's try this one more time. Last time that we're going to try this tonight. Back at base. Back at base. All right, so we're going to load these guys up with 25, fo 25 food, 5 fuel, 1 tent, 1 ladder. Back at base. Nice and toasty. Bucket base. I'll go ahead and Top send the them off. At the point. Right time Next time I'll just going. set up a camp. It. it looks like this time we have to get to the top right of the map. You can see sort of you can sort of see it from here. This little almost iceberg with like a little mound on the edge of it. Go ahead and use our telescope here to get an idea of where to go from here. So it's giving me a little bit more info about the ice packs. We're making good progress. Heat's at about half. All right. Let's, let's go ahead and have him return to the main base. I think he should be able to get back there, especially with the weather being good. Sure we'll go ahead and send our Scotsman out now. He's making good time. He's making good progress there. You can see he's moving very quickly. Hang in there, lad. Please don't die. Going to need some resupply. Back at base. This is now damn unpleasant. Feeling chipper. Okay, so I don't know if I had to click on him because he was back at base to allow him to go inside or what. I'm not quite sure. That was weird. Um. Good sunny weather. This guy is actually going to set a camp up with which the other guy that we've sent back is going to come bring supplies to. So this guy's going to push forward as far as he can go. Let's take a look. All right. This seems like as good of a spot as any. Go ahead and build your tent camp while you're building that. The first guy, go ahead and load back up on food. Back at base. Feeling it in my toes. Top of the world. That should do it. Reach the tent. Feeling it in my toes. All right. Oh, need this. Top of the world. Top of the world. Right up. Do I actually have to Time click to on him going. to have his health call? Feeling it in my toes. Oh, need this. Top of All the right. world. Need to get to the tent. You're at the tent, bud. All right, it's about to get sunny again. The weather's going to get better. All right, doesn't look like he loses any heat while he's at the tent after we've used some heating oil to help him restore his heat a little bit. So that's good news. Meanwhile, our other character's closing in. We may not have brought enough food. I think we have enough fuel. That's not my concern. But I don't know if we have enough food for this base to maintain its position. So we may have to send someone back. He's just hanging out there outside like, Hey guys, don't mind me, I'm just a little bit chilly. Alright, so we made it to the camp. Need some tea. Time for some heat. Nice I'm going to send you back to the main camp to get more supplies. Although maybe that's unwise. He's moving pretty quickly. Hope he doesn't freeze. Meanwhile, this guy's going to move forward here to try and make some progress. 
We're almost there. We're like three quarters of the way out. Let's take a look, see. Going to need some resupply. I think he's low on food. Can we bridge this gap? With the ladder? Roger. Oh no, a snow. That should do it. Nice. Oh, we can. All right, I'm actually gonna have him head back to the camp. Back at base. All right, the other guy made it back to base, so apparently I didn't have to That's click on it. This guy's at the tent where there's some food for him. Time for some heat. No, right, so he's gonna rest. This guy's gonna bring a bunch more food. That's gonna be the focus. Maybe another ladder too. Wow, why can he carry so much more than he could Locker before? Base. Oh, but he's s slow as fuck. Sure enough. Hopefully he can make it that far. Without freezing to death. I wish, you know, it'd be interesting is if you could like ditch supplies. I wonder if he's got the blanket around his shoulders because he's in the camp, like chilling. I may have overburdened this guy with supplies to try and re resupply the camp in one fell swoop, rather than a, maybe a more practical approach. I can see the camp from here. I think I'll make it. My uh, temperature is a little bit above half, and the weather just turned to sunny, so. It seems like our character's gear changes based on whether it's, you know, a bad snowstorm or not. I'm assuming that has some impact to how quickly you freeze to death, but I could be wrong. He's getting chilly. Alright, he's almost there. I like the rifle slung in a completely <laughs> illogical way across his back. Alright. Reach that tent. You did reach the tent. Yeah, Good job, sir. Alright. First character. You have food now. You're also much lighter. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. To the objective, mein Freund, ja? Well, the other guy hang back a bit. His health isn't all the way back up yet. Closing in on the objective. Not making it any closer. Let's take a look, see. I'm gonna need another Going ladder, need of which I don't have. We do have enough fuel, though, so we should be able to heat our character back up once we get there. Food, we're a little bit low on. Shit. That just dropped alarmingly fast. No! God damn it. Need to get to it. Yeah, I think the, the challenge in this game, Drogi, is managing your supplies because as you could see as we got further and further out from our main base we were chewing through that food he had eaten most of the food the other guy had brought we we're chewing through that food and that oil pretty at a pretty steady rate at our base and i really realistically i set my base up just a little bit too far from the main base um you can see it looks like we were almost there so we just had to get to this this crossing here, we needed one more ladder to get across, and then we would have been on the right corner here, which was our objective. Um, it's probably more 
interesting and challenging than than I think my uh, first a couple of attempts. Um, no, you don't technically have unlimited in the base, although you have a larger amount than I think you would feasibly ever use up uh, in terms of supplies at the base. Like if we go back in and we restart here, um, you will see as it loads here you will see in the base you've got a thousand food which i don't think i mean i was carrying like 20 at a time so i don't think there's any scenario where i would use that all up um the oil is even even less likely to be used up the tents you could certainly use up you only get four of those the ladders are probably unlikely although maybe later missions have more gaps that you have to span with the ladders it's an interesting concept it's an interesting little game um I do think there's some things that the game needs to do a better job of communicating. I, I had to, you know, the first 30 minutes of the stream was was me sort of trying to figure out what buttons were what. The tutorial tells you, but I, I there should be a key map or somewhere, somewhere. Um, and I think the game can do a little bit better job kind of guiding you through some of the early stuff. I do think the tutorial does a good job. I just think that it's, you know... I guess in my mind I shouldn't have to play through a tutorial. Maybe that's unfair, but, uh, you know, a lot of people just jump in and play games nowadays. And not to say that a tutorial isn't valuable, because I think they are. I just think that, like, the systems in the game should do a better job of communicating. Like, for example, the health meter goes down pretty rapidly, and then it, your, your guy's like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, and then all of a sudden... Oh, shit, I'm freezing, and, well, I probably should have thought of that before. Now, that's on the player somewhat, but maybe not being fine when you're at, like, half health or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, but I think that's all we're going to do tonight. I know I only streamed an hour, but I'm trying to get a lot of sleep in this new coronavirus world uh, to make sure that I'm able to stand up to the pandemic that is going around. Um, this was my first look at Terra Incognito, uh, ninth, Ar Antarctica, 1911. Um, it's an interesting little game. I think it's going to appeal to a certain set of people. I th think I will probably stick more with every single soldier's Afghanistan 11 and Vietnam 65, which are really good counterinsurgency games. Um, I'm not sure this is up my alley. But that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Is this something that looks interesting to you? Whether you'd like to play more of it, whether you'd like to see more of it, uh, and and whatnot. But really, I guess the best way to explain my first impression is this mainly is a resource management game uh, where you're just managing, ensuring you have enough food, enough supplies at the front, and that you don't push yourself too, uh, too hard or too quickly or, 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 or whatnot without adequate logistical support. It's a, it's a resource management game about logistics and about trying to find the path to the corner of the map. And you do that five or six times, and you get to the South Pole, and you try and do it before the Norwegians do. That's what the game is. Um, and uh, I think it's a cool little, cool little game, cool little concept, but I'll leave that there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.